the access code to Prince Philip's private computer mailbox and left a rather unwelcome birthday greeting. Well, that same hacker has now linked this terminal to the computer at Daresbury, which is used for nuclear research. At the moment, you can read all this data because it's obviously low-level security. But if I try and go deeper into the computer, the data will be encoded, so all I'll get back is this sort of information, what's known as SHASH. To be able to read that, I'd need to have access to a decoding system. But we found out about a particularly worrying method of eavesdropping that gets around even the most advanced encryption procedures by reading the operator's screen before it's encoded. The way of doing that is based on a phenomenon that's been known about for at least 20 years. And although it's not actually an official secret, there was no one in this country who was prepared to talk to us about it. The phenomenon is quite simply that all electrical equipment gives off signals. If you take even a pocket calculator and you put it near to a radio which has long wave on it, you can hear the interference as I press the keys here. Well, even if a calculator radiates a signal like that, you might still be surprised to learn that a computer terminal radiates a signal that can be picked up over two miles away. What's more, that signal carries the information displayed on the terminal screen, and that information can be read. The data on this VDU screen is being transmitted all around the studio, and it's being picked up by this receiving system here that's not linked to it in any way at all. It's only a hundred pounds worth of equipment, so uh, it's not the greatest picture, and I'll try and stabilize it a bit there. And if I move the aerial, you can see that the information disappears off the screen, move it back, and it returns. Now, all we've got here is an ordinary television set with an aerial and an amplifier and a rather special, if cheap, box of tricks. But we had to go to the Dr. Nair laboratories in Holland to get hold of it. Incidentally, they use this equipment quite legally to investigate this very problem. And they were the only people, <coughs> excuse me, who we knew who could find out and, and would admit to having it. Well, we've seen it working in the controlled conditions of the studio, but yesterday we set this up to see how it would work outside. Well, at the moment we're outside an office block in West London, and we found that there's a VDU screen operating about halfway up the building, probably on the seventh or eighth floor. And, in fact, it's a letter being typed out on that screen. I can actually read it here. It says, Dear Mr. Jackson, thank you for your... Whoops. Thank you for your letter requesting the use... Uh, whoop, I've lost it again. Requesting the use of our facilities. I have spoken to Mr. Saunders, and he agrees that there may well be problems finding a parking space on the day of your visit. And the letter goes on. I would think it was fair to assume that this is a word processor, but of course it could be something far more confidential. Though the picture is just readable, it's hardly perfect. But more money and more determination would soon improve that. So, is there any way to stop this? Well, yes, there is. You can cover your terminal and your screen with a metal screen. And it'll also cover the front here with glass, perhaps with a mesh inside it. If you do that, you'll do some good by absorbing the signals and conducting them down to earth. But there will still be other leaks. And to make it 100% effective, this screening will be, have to be made to a very high specification called Tempest. And that's the standard used by the government defense departments. But Tempest protection would quadruple the cost of an average computer terminal. So most business computers, like those at all branches of your bank, will be left vulnerable. But um, before you rush out to close down your account, we must point out that we believe that there are only a very few people outside government departments who know how to do it. And having said that, the very fact that we were able to gain access to computer information with very primitive equipment must give cause for concern.